This is my half-brother, Sam. I've been filming him since he was 11. Oh my god! Oh, Joyce! This is his mom. I felt so special around her. Joyce is here and Sam. She would dance to music with me on her shoulders. When he was 14, she vanished without telling anyone. Did she say goodbye? Or? No, she didn't say goodbye that time. At age 17, Sam and I take a road trip to find her. I want her to know that I'm not mad at her. She is wanted. What happens if Sam has to hear that his mom doesn't want to see him? So when we set out to find your mom, did you get what you wanted? You have set in motion a journey that will circle around and circle around in your life. Now I have to start leaning into that discomfort or I'm gonna be like emotionally stunted my whole life. I just kept asking, do you really wanna do this, Sam? In everyone's youth, there's at least one pivotal something. It haunts us, but it can make us stronger. Things will not be the same after you do this. Sam will be different. So are you ready to talk about your mom? <laughs> I'm good. Um, Meet you. Yeah, good. How are you? Good. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm also. Are you set or? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, great. Okay. Well, it's nice. To, again, it's nice to meet you. And um, I don't. I don't remember the exact circumstances of how I saw Sam now. Uh, the probably a publicist from a festival or something sent it to me. I get a lot of those. But this one stood out, Reed. I mean, you know, so I was, I watched it projected. We have a projector at home and I watched it, you know, it looked beautiful. Um, and my, I watched it with my, uh, my girlfriend, we watched it and I was like, this is, a, I'd love to get this guy on my podcast. So I'm asking you, do you have, do you know how I can make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> let me go, uh, let me go ask myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm totally here. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, it's a special film. It's it, and you, you know, uh, it's had a great trajectory so far. I mean, it's had a great, a lot of great festivals. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, the big one for us was in Zurich, where you know, like we win this really big, prestigious award. I think they only give out like four awards and um, huge opera house, and you know, we go up on stage and everyone's in black tie. <laughs> Wild. Oh yeah. Oh, is there a difference? I mean, if you've shown the film in various parts of the, well, maybe just in Europe and here. I don't know. Have you shown it? Yeah, in we've a, done. Yeah. So, um, yeah, U.S., Canada. We Canada. were just in a festival in Zagreb, um, uh -huh. Germany. I think. Yeah, we've we've been we've been uh, circulating. Yeah. No, it sounds like it. And is do you notice any difference in terms of? the response to the films like on a social level or like you know or does everybody kind of have similar responses like you know oh it's very moving it's a moving story powerful story uh about multi-generational um uh, i guess uh emotional i, I I know you have a particular way of describing it, so I'm trying to remember exactly how you describe it, but generational trauma. Trauma, um, generational yeah. trauma. That's family right. trauma. Yeah. I mean, I think I think to answer your question, the uh the feeling that I've gotten from all the audiences that I've been around is more or less the same. It brings up 
connection to family. It brings up connection to relationships. It brings up like your own personal understanding of growth and what that means to you. And all those things I just think are, they're just fundamental aspects of being a human. Exactly. So therefore, the film has a universal connection. It creates a universal, uh, I mean, we all uh, yearn to uh, connect to, uh, well, you know, obviously to have relations with our parents, with our children. We can all relate to when it doesn't exactly happen that way um, and how traumatic that, that that is and what damage that can cause. Totally. And even, you know, you're somebody who's been adopted and you don't really have a, you know, a connection with uh, your birth parents that you still might be kind of yearning for like what that connection might have been like. Uh, right. So you, when were you, when did uh, you and, and, and Sam uh, are, are, are steps? Halves. Halves. <laughs> we're a blended family. Um, we have the same right. dad the same and different dad. moms. Right. Yeah. Right. And so he is, and just to clarify, because I, I was um, struggling to remember before I, I came here and I realized I forgot some of my notes, but, but uh, that you are the younger of the two. I'm the older brother. You're the older brother. Okay. So uh, obviously your dad remarried Sam's mom. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So, and, and when did you, when you started shooting um, film, because you know, you've been shooting your entire, pretty much your entire life, right? You start yeah. off with a, a kind of a, 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 an inherited mediocre camera, right? Um, yeah. And, it's- and, and over the years, obviously, different cameras have come into your purview, whether yeah. you purchase them or, or not. Um, and so uh, obviously as you're watching the Sam Now, the documentary, we're looking at different um, formats, you know, of, uh, of footage, but, but you, you didn't have any um, initial plan or thoughts of, or, or ideas about this in the bigger picture. It was just, you were going sort of, you were shooting your brother who had this um, alter ego. And that, right, you created stories and short films, right? Was that how it started? Yeah, exactly. It starts back in 97. I'm making um, short films. My brother is the subject and star of these films. They're they're fictional representations of childhood experiences that... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, real, I'm I'm a teenager too. I'm I just I just gone through a lot of this stuff, and so I'm working that out on, on film. Um, what, but not what, consciously. Consciously. Okay, so you were. I mean, uh, the, I guess the question I have is: as a kid, how sophisticated are you? Are you like saying, you know, I I I want to work some of this this emotional the confusion complications out, and do it artistically by making short films or yes less, yes less i was doing that yes you were so, yeah but that was for me you know like that was yeah. that was me as a you know 18 19 20 you know like in those in those years i um i didn't go to film school and i wanted to make films and uh the way that i thought to make films was to um do coming of age piece about the experiences I had just had, you know, you know, growing up. And so I started acting out this stuff using Sam as subject, and we make a series of films. And what I thought was cool about the project is that Sam is aging through those films, and yes. we're, we're growing together in this right. way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in that process, um, we go on lots of adventures um, and uh, develop a really tight bond. Um, mm. So much so that like when I suggest how about the Blue Panther, Sam's alter ego, uh, goes to find his mom, it sort of works to in Sam's mind as a a vehicle to to maybe delve into a difficult thing. Mm. So he also, even though he's somewhat younger, he's under he's are you guys as kids or young young adults having conversations specifically about what could be a cathartic 
uh, experience or no way i don't know any no guy, young guys that do that you know like i think right that... yeah well even as much as what you're describing earlier as you know you're making a conce- concerted you know effort at what you're you you're, you're actually have like these goals these almost psychological goals. yeah i mean at the time i was you know i wanted to try to be a filmmaker and i and i saw like some of the stories that i had as from being you know a kid as potential for 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 making some pieces of film they're short you know they're like really short films but they're um Mm -hmm. they're just exploring these feelings like um like uh crashing your bike and like what it's like to like be locked out of your house and like what you know what bullying feels like that kind of stuff right wow and the, we're not getting into you know we're not getting into these like the bigger Freudian. conversations of the movie that come that yeah. come later yeah i yeah because i i was just trying to get, gain a kind of a more nuanced understanding of what that journey was like for you guys you know and i understand i have to imagine uh having a uh, a son who has a half sibling this is for people, so it's a shorthand for people to understand the relationships and the history. You're, it's your brother. We don't, you don't, your brother is a brother. So we only mention half or step because, we're, you know, it is by way of further explanation of, of your family's history, right? I mean, that's, that's about it. I assume. That's how I feel too. I definitely feel that way. He's my brother. And, you know, I think there's also chosen family for people you know sometimes right. you think you know you get to a place where you're like this person's my brother even though we're not blood related sure sure uh, um at what point describe the 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 point maybe it was your mom uh, let me rephrase your mother joyce uh also carried around a lot of trauma and at a certain point in uh sam's childhood uh, decided to to leave very suddenly, and in over the t- years later, when you guys are making these films and they're getting, they're obviously uh, stri- striking some sort of nerve, or you're seeing some sort of something uh, coming into focus. The idea occurs to go and seek her out. Yeah, yeah. Is that a fair way to describe it. Yeah, I think you described it well. I think that, you know, we'd been circling around, you know, um, all of these, you know, these themes around like, you know, growing pains. And and then there was a really very real elephant in the room in our family, which yeah. is that at this point, um, Joyce has been gone for like, years now like it's been years and and nothing's really happened so um i'm noticing the inaction i'm noticing that maybe nothing's going to happen and i suggest to sam how about the blue panther finds his mom because sam wanted to do all the you know he wanted he had all these ideas too for movies that he wanted to make and one of them was like his alter ego who's like this like cartoon character with a wrestling mask and a too tight wetsuit and you know he was going to do this kind of comedy action hero thing and I just suggested how about the blue panther finds his mom because that was you know it's 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 tough to it's tough to define like the relationship between brothers and boys but it is really really hard (laughs) uh to talk about feelings and difficult things among men I found it much more easy to talk about it with women um but like with 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 you know with Sam the way that it surfaced was through telling a story and making a movie and that that happened to be a a way that we could we could do this you know we already knew how to do that we already knew how to tell a story and make a movie about something that was painful Mm. Something very just it was very beautiful about taking it like this the of that playing itself out in front of our you know eyes uh, as viewers like seeing this the Blue Panther this creation stumble into real life trauma and sort of 
it's 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 heroic you know it really is heroic all of a sudden fiction becomes kind of nonfiction in a way mm. you know it's a it's a it's almost like it's, it's an accident i don't i mean that ends up being maybe you know probably a really uh just a, a, a happens to be a really powerful way to t to sort of tell this story you know um and also uh it's really complicated we you know like my feeling is as i'm watching is on one hand of course the the most basic urge or or driving force or force or motivation is to reconnect with one's own mother it's your mother you're inside her womb you know it's there's nothing more powerful than that connection and at the same time the amount of i would expect or not uh be surprised by a lot of rage anger resentment for abandoning you know you guys and that's a complicated thing like we're and you guys i mean the what i watched was why aren't they the amount of patience and uh you know i don't want to give away too much i want people to see it obviously i'm not going to give away any more than what we've talked about but um yeah i mean I, I don't know what do, what do you think and what does Sam think what does your family think of the film and, and, you know maybe and and that what I just and what I just brought up because mm. you got your grand you know the your the grandmother her your mom's mother in law right your dad in there all these yeah people it's a big who, question who had to see you guys go back and find Joyce as well as you know or attempt to find Joyce and then that all that that brought on yeah it's a tremendous amount right so um yeah I mean you brought up a lot of pieces there and you want to know how the yeah. family reacted to seeing the movie yeah I guess let's we'll start there I know I just sort of opened up a you know the tap there, the yeah there's a few things I could respond to but I'll just talk about first yeah the family um Sam you know um the this is a project 25 years in the making and I didn't present it to my family until 25 years had happened. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a long time for me to carry um, the baggage and the, uh, the stories and the, the weight of like everybody's feelings um, in my family. Um, and so for me, um, it was very, cathartic process to finally present it to them. It was also really important to me to present it to them in a thorough way where they were all together. So we had a big screening in Seattle at the Egyptian theater and um, all my family members were there almost um, and neighbors and friends and all of that. And we had a big community experience around it and um your family came up on stage afterward to do q a and you know it's a mixture of like pride in me um feelings that they hadn't thought about coming up just witnessing a story about any family i think that that's the other surprising thing is like they're able to watch it and see and get caught up in the story as well and be like, oh, oh yeah, you know, like it's it's yeah, it's, it's hitting them perspective. All of a sudden, seeing it on screen, even though it's your life. Yeah, yeah. So that was surprised me too. Um, how how they just got caught up in the story and were like, wow, what a story, you know. Um, and and then, uh, you know, Sam was when he he his reaction was like relief. You know, I think that you know he had some he. Here's this, you know, here <laughs> he trusts me a lot, but like, you know, still, like if you have a story, you know, that's telling this long-term thing about your life, like that's a lot to that's a lot to handle. And I think he was relieved that um I did it in a pretty honest way. And that um that in the end I revealed um kind of the beautiful messiness of of family. Um I think he was concerned it might be tied up too neatly. I could go on and on. I mean, each I one know. of my family members reacted differently. 
Uh, you brought up like some other things that were interesting, like like patience, you know, and how at times in there you felt like you were like just like I, I gotta just like you know like I, something's gotta happen. Why are they being so patient? And it's like yes, the me as um, filmmaker, this was a great exercise in in patience as both the filmmaker and family member. Um, here I am caught in the middle, um, balancing these relationships. Um, I certainly don't want to burn any bridges between my stepmom and my brothers, Sam and Jared, who have a lot more at stake. There's a third brother. I apologize. I left him out. And Peter. Yeah. And, um, so I find myself, you know, as this mystery unfolds, <laughs> where is she you know where how how can we find her that's the original mystery to like hey this is deeper than that there's something much deeper about this whole story and i go i go very deep into it and just try to find empathy for every one of my family members the best i can yeah well you know we're way past the point in, fil in documentary filmmaking where there's controversy around making a very personal film and inserting yourself into the film. This, if there was uh, some sort of rule, it's long been transgressed, right? Because, and I think for the better. And stop worrying about whether or not, even if it's fiction, nonfiction, even though we know this is nonfiction, but it's a story, you know? And, and, um, and it's a curious to see how you grapple with the objective versus the subjective, which is kind of what you're talking about here. Documentary yeah. filmmaker telling a story that organically is emerging, but also you're a character <laughs> with a lot in the background. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot on the line. I mean, we start off telling stories at the beginning of the movie. You know, we start off making these fiction films. We carry that through in the movie too. You know, it's it's something that I think when you really think about, you know, what is fact and what is fiction, um, the stories that we tell, the fictions that we act out, tell a lot about our authenticity and mm -hmm. who we are. And I think that that's something I really leaned into is like, yeah, how does Sam perform? How does he want to act out on camera? You know, like, how do we want to tell this story? And I think that in doing that, I mean, it's a really, really hard edit. It's a really hard movie to make something like this. But I think I was able to tap into an authenticity that is um, is <laughs> is really cool. It's a really cool kind of authenticity. Did you um, tap tap anybody? I mean, uh, or did you, uh, in terms of? the actual sculpting of this story, the editing, and the post-production, all that stuff. I, mean, I don't know, did you, were you inspired by anything you'd seen or did you like reach out yeah. to any other filmmakers maybe that you knew about that had gone down this path of, mm. you know, uh, exposing one's family in their story? Good question. Yeah, I had a lot of, um, you know, over 25 year span, I had so many different influences on this. Um, yeah, um, I, I mean, the, Apted. Michael uh, yeah, Apted. Michael Apted, you know, I had seen Ooh. as a teenager and I was like, whoa, that's far out. And then um, yeah, he did this podcast you know. twice. Oh, cool. So, you're, so you're cool. Good, you're in good company. A good company. Oh, this. nice. Incredible. Yeah. So, you know, um, Sarah Polly's stories we tell was really inspirational. Um, okay. Definitely. All of Ross McElwee's films, Sherman's sure. March, you know, very, very inspirational stuff. Um, Michael Moore, I was at a book signing as an 18 year old and he, he's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm, I'm like in high school. What do you mean? What do I do? And he's like, what do you do? And I was like, I was like, well, I want to be a filmmaker. And he's like, well, just say it. And I was like, what? Like, and he, advice. here's a huge line. People are signing books. You're like taking a moment to like <laughs> have this processing session with me. And so I was like, okay. I'm a filmmaker and I that changed my life. Um wow. But um you know so, gosh there's so many. I mean in yeah. recent years minding the gap was huge. I was just like yes, thank you. 
Thank you, Bing. Yeah, um, is on as well. I have, I have a lot of, lot of. Yes, Harriet. We are talking about it a bit on this podcast. Most of the ones you just mentioned, actually. There's um, a great memoir, um, Ariel Levy's uh, An Abbreviated Life, that inspired me as far as like, you know, being yeah. able to open up about things that are haunt you from your family. Um, and yeah, dude. So there's, it just goes on and on, you know, like yeah. has so many influences. And I think this will influence younger filmmakers too. You know, I think you made something really remarkable and powerful. Um, and it's called Sam Now. It's uh, going to open in LA on Thursday. Jump in and correct me if I make any errors here, but it's going to be uh, in LA on March 6th, as of March 6th, in New York at the Village East uh, as of March 7th. And then it will be wonderfully. Uh, uh, It'll have a broadcast. Did you have to make a broadcast length version of this? Do you have to go back and edit yet again for the broadcast at independent lens? <laughs> yes and no. We um our final cut, our you know, final, final cut is the broadcast length. Um, oh, and very we, good. um yeah, we we got it all in. Um 87 minutes. Um well we want to urge people to go to see it theatrically. And so yes. And it will eventually there will be a broadcast as I mentioned, and we can we'll 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 plug that soon enough because it's not far off, right? Yes, uh, we're opening theatrically on April sixth in Glendale at the Glendale. Lemley Glendale. Theater, mm-hmm. and then uh, right away uh, in New York on the seventh at uh, Village East. That's all you need to say, and maybe it'll open in other theaters. Is that possible? Yes, and we're opening like. A bunch of other theaters. Uh, we have a very nice there. website. People can go. We'll put the website at the end, and people can, uh, or or down below, or something like that. But we will, and we'll urge people based on this conversation. I hope some people go see it. I mean, uh, it's also a really funny at times, and and heartwarming, and you got a beautiful family, um, and it's a great story. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to not only see it, but then to meet the filmmaker, Reed Harkness. So thanks for uh, making the time and coming on. Thanks for having this conversation, Adam. It's been great. Let's do it again sometime with uh, some other project soon, you know. All right. I'll see you in 25 years. (laughs) Okay. That's a deal. (laughs) All right. Have a good one. You too. Thank you.